Hey guys, and welcome to the dating game with Troy Francis and another coaching video. So today we're gonna to be diving right into how do you keep a woman interested over the long term? This is the $99 million question really. And it's been said before, right? I mean, game, we often think about, okay, so the initial approach when you first meet her, blah, blah, blah. But actually the really tough bit is when you get into a relationship and keeping that relationship going and, and, and keeping it going in a way where she's happy and she she wants to be there because she's still into you, okay? And what will often sadly happen is that guys will get into a relationship, they'll think, okay, great, got the girlfriend, got the wife, got the fiance, whatever, job done, box ticks. They'll kind of let themselves go. And she then starts to lose interest and then maybe they break up or some infidelity happens or at, at the very least, you know, the relationship goes downhill, it becomes unhappy, there's a lot of arguments, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And obviously, you want to avoid all of those things, okay? So how do you do that? Well, it's not an easy task. It is possible. People do make this work, okay? But what you have to remember is the fundamentals of female psychology. So what are women actually looking for in the first place? Well, what she's looking for, as we've said before, uh, fundamentally is um, survival plus replication, the ability to replicate. Okay. Now that's not to say every couple is going to have children or, or, or whatever, but those are the sort of the fundamental things. She's looking for a guy in the long term who is going to be there for her, who is going to be able to protect her and look after her and provide for her. In theory, I mean, she may be working as well, but you know what I'm saying? He's competent. He's able to, to get stuff done. Um, and on top of that, he is genetically a good match for her, right? So as I say, not everyone has kids. That's a personal thing. But <clears throat> if, you know, still on a biological level, obviously she's looking for somebody who biologically is going to give her the best offspring possible. Okay. So you've got those two things, which women are, are, are looking for subconsciously, particularly in a long-term mate even though it, it plays into short-term mating as well, but particularly in a long-term mate. However, then you've also got this pesky little thing called hypergamy that comes in to the equation as well. Now, hypergamy, very much discussed in the manosphere space. You'll probably be familiar with the term if you follow this content. What it basically means is that women want to be with the best possible man that they can get, all right? now. On the surface, that sounds very simple and it makes a lot of sense because why wouldn't she want to be with the best dude she can get, right? Sounds pretty, you know, pr pretty obvious, like a, a, no, a no brainer, as we would say. The, the issue, though, <clears throat> is that hypergamy is something of a movable feast, okay? Because you might think so, what does hypergamy mean? Well, it means, okay, the best looking guy she can get or the tallest, best looking guy she can get. All right, well, that's one thing or the most jacked guy she can get, right? So it could be that. It could be all these physicality things. But then what if the guy's got those things, but he's not particularly wealthy, right? He doesn't have resources, okay? So he might then be lacking in this other aspect of hypergamy, which is, which is money, which then, you know, and she might be completely in love with this dude for, turn it down. She might be completely in love with this dude for a period of time, but then there's this aspect of, of hypergamy that's not quite being ticked off. And I suppose if you bring it back to survival versus replication, you know, he might be actually ticking the, the boxes on the replication side of the formula uh, very effectively, but maybe less so on the survival side. Because if he doesn't have the resources to provide longer term, then could that become a problem? Is she going to have the lifestyle that she wants? Is the, are the kids going to have the lifestyle that, that, that they want, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, what will often happen is, you know, the girl might date that dude, you know, in college or in her party years. And then she's a bit like, hang on a minute, this guy's a bit of a waster. Um, he doesn't seem to be serious about his career. He doesn't seem to be making any money or, or having any plans to, to, to bring in money. Um, and so now actually, this guy over here, who maybe isn't quite as good looking and it doesn't have quite as good a physique, but has got it dialed in financially, then suddenly this guy over here starts to look more attractive and maybe she monkey branches over to him. Okay. And then the reverse could happen. A few years later, you know, maybe she's with that dude for a while. Maybe they have a couple of kids, they have a bit of a family life together. 
And then she's like, actually, you know what? This guy, yes, he's been a great provider. He's been a great father, but fucking hell, he's boring, right? You know, he's got nothing going on. He's got, he's just, he's just all about work. He's all about spreadsheets. He's all about money. He's all about, you know, the financial markets. He doesn't seem to have any soul. There's nothing kind of, there's, no, there's nothing to grab hold of there. And I need something a bit more than that. And then maybe she goes for, I don't know, some kind of like spiritual shaman type guy. You know, she goes to Bali on holiday and she meets some dude and he's all into like, you know, spirituality and reading her a- astrological charts and um, understanding her psyche and all of these different things. And she's like, hang on a minute. No, this was the thing that I wanted because actually what, was lacking in the last guy. Yes, he was a you know great provider, but he didn't have that side of him that he didn't understand, you know, the 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 real meaning of life, the real nuances of life. That's what I need because what's really important in life, it's not money. It's not money at all. It's actually it's this stuff. It's like, you know, so then she goes with that dude for a bit. And then she gets fed up with that dude and she's like, oh actually, you know, he's a bit of a he's a bit of a loser. He's a bit of a hippie. He's a bit of a brokey. And then the cycle repeats again. Okay. I'm not saying that 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 commonly happens, but I'm just it, trying to illustrate the manner in which hypergamy can be a multifaceted feast, okay? It's not just this one thing, all right? And, and look, I mean, even when a woman does get a guy who you would say is ticking most of, the, if not all of the boxes, then we still see these big celebrity divorces. So we'll see like Tom Brady or whoever it is, um, you know, A-list celebrity, wealthy, competent, respected by uh, other men, Desired by women, world famous, blah, blah, blah. Great provider, probably you know, ticking out every single box you can imagine. And still, he ends up in a situation where he's no longer with his wife. You know, you can look at other people as well. There's plenty of examples Johnny Depp, um, Will Smith, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So even when you are ticking all the boxes, um, over time, the woman can still become dissatisfied with aspects of what you have to offer. And they may seek the aspects that she feels that you don't offer elsewhere, okay? So the question remains, how do you prevent this happening? Well, look, I mean, if Tom Brady can't, then uh, it's it's obviously going to be tricky. But um, the first thing is, I think, to be aware of this stuff. And the truth of the matter is that most guys outside of a very small subsection on the internet or on YouTube aren't even really aware that these dynamics exist at all. I mean, most guys just think, okay, so I get a decent job. I go to the gym three times a week. You know, I get some nice clothes, job done. You know, she's going to like me. She falls in love with me. It's going to be forever. That's it. What they don't realize is that love is always conditional. Okay. There's always a conditional element to, to love. There's always a transactional, there's always some kind of transactional element to, to love. And I don't necessarily mean financial, but there is some sort of transactional element to it. You know, you are getting something from her. It might be her beauty. It might be her affection. It might be her love. It might be the way that she, she makes you feel, whatever it is, or a combination thereof. And she's getting something from you. And it, it, again, it could be the way you make her feel. It could be the fact that you bring excitement into her life, that you make her feel emotion, you make her feel drama. It could be that you're a rich motherfucker and you've got an amazing car and three houses and she has a great life, right? It could be that. Or it could be a combination of those things, right? But there is this element of transactionality that is always present. And this is why, sadly, you know, we can never just assume any relationship is going to just last forever as, as much as we would like to. You know, as much as we would like to, and I always say, I am really, in a way, a a kind of disappointed romantic. I'm kind of a cynical romantic. You know, I've been associated with this space for a a number of years. I've been on these podcasts. I've said some fairly sort of uh, nihilistic type things, sometimes in jest, sometimes seriously about the nature of modern relationships and stuff like that. But just as a thought experiment for a moment, wouldn't it be great if it all worked out like it was meant to. Wouldn't it be great if it was all like in the Disney movies or if it was all, if it was all like on the rom-coms or whatever, right? You know, and you just met somebody, you guys fell in love and you're all good. Now, of course, that, that does happen. It can happen. But increasingly in the modern world, it seems to be somewhat rare. So the first thing, as I say, is, is knowledge. Okay, knowledge is power. You have to be aware of the dynamics that are at play here. And what, of course, is, is making all of this more difficult or more challenging is the fact that we have social media and we have the tyranny of 
choice. So she can look at her Instagram, she can look at TikTok, she can look at whatever, and she's seeing this constant feed of these high value dudes. Maybe they're even sliding into her DMs if she's still, you know, got on Instagram and she's got an account live or whatever. So, you know, there's this perception of all of these different options out there, okay, which may or may not be be how serious they are is another matter, but there's this perception that there's this limitless number of options out there. Um, and, you know, if she's a young, very attractive woman, that it kind of is limitless for a period of time. Okay, so that that's the other thing. So you've got that problem as well. So hypergamy has been put on on steroids by the nature of choice. I mean, it's always existed. I mean, women have always wanted to get the best guy that they can get. But now, because of the global nature of the dating marketplace, because of the technology, it's just it's just gone up to this other level. Okay, we kind of all know this already, but it's it, it's worth recapping just to sort of set the scene here. Okay, so what are some of the things that you can do in order to be, or in order to, rather to ensure that she wants to stay with you for the long term? Okay, again, there are no there's no silver bullet here. There's no guarantee. Because you can do everything right, okay, and you can still fuck up, or, or or it can still, you know, something can still go wrong anyway. So there's no guarantees. However, what I think is important are some of the things that I've listed out here, and I'm going to go through them now for you very quickly. So the first thing is you always need to have the ability to walk away, okay, or at least you always have to present as though you have the ability to walk away. You're with her, you love her, you love her more than anybody else in the world. You would do anything for her. Maybe you would lay your life down for her, okay? Or your your family, your offspring, et cetera, fine. But, you know, at the end of the day, if something happens, if a line is crossed, if something unacceptable happens, you are you are willing and able to get up and walk away, okay? So you are not dependent upon her. Yes, you want her in your life. Yes, you love her very much. Yes, you want to be with her. But, you know, if push comes to shove, and she does something that is is, is disrespectful, or it goes against your, your fundamental values, or the, the agreement that you have, you're prepared to walk, okay? That's the first thing. And that's really the ultimate power that, that any guy has, really, and any anybody has, really. If you're prepared to walk away from a situation that no longer suits you, then you retain power. And that's a very good thing. Because you know, as soon as she knows that she's got you on the hook and, you know, whatever she does, she can kind of do anything, really. She can go and sleep with the next door neighbor and you're not going to do anything. Then she's going to lose respect for you. And as we know, when power comes along, absolute power corrupts absolutely. So she's more likely to act out on those things because she knows she can get away with them. All right. So that's the first thing. Um, number two is, look, again, <clears throat> Um, I'm not talking about being a, a, a beta cuck simp character here, but provisioning ability is important. Okay, you ha you have to understand. In most cases, right, the man is going to be the man is going to be the person who is is bringing home the bacon. Okay, now it, that's not to say that she can't work. It's not to say that you know she can't earn her own money or have her own business or you know whatever. But ultimately. She wants to be able to rely on you as being the one who can who can look after her. Okay, and I think that's a very important masculine trait. Okay, I don't think that that is simping for her. I don't think that is some kind of you know people would characterize that as being somehow like oh you're just you, you know you're using money or something like that. I don't really see it like that. I think the guy should be the guy was always the hunter gatherer. Okay, the the masculine man goes out. He, you know, he eats what he kills, and and he basically brings brings that home for his family, and he looks after his family. He looks after the woman he's with. Okay, so you want to retain that role. Now, of course, in life, shit happens. All right, maybe you go through a tough time. Maybe you, you know you lose your job. Maybe there's a problem with your business for a period of time or whatever. If you are with a good woman, okay, and that's another thing I guess we should say. Obviously, you should try to select a woman who. You, you think, to the best of your knowledge, is going to stand by you. But if you're with a good woman, then she should be prepared to stand by you for a period of time while you get yourself onto your feet, okay? She's probably not going to hang around forever, though, okay? So ideally, yes, you know, she's going to be there through the, the tough times as well as the good times, and that's the ideal. Um, 
But bear in mind, there are going to have to be some good times. It can't all be bad times and you're just sitting there in your bedroom and she's, you know, bringing home the bacon. It's just, it's not going to work out, okay? So you need to be prepared to undertake that provisioning, okay? Now, another note to the non-believers here, because people are going to say, oh, so you're talking about being a provider. Well, that's, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you always talk about being the, lo the lover. Yes, initially... When you first create that attraction, when you first draw her to you, yeah, she should be into you. She should be into you as a lover. She should be sexually attracted to you, okay? That has to be the bedrock. However, when the thing becomes a bit more serious and a bit more structured, then you are the man, and you have, kind of have to step up to the plate. And, and, and if you don't, I mean, there, there are some women who will date a guy who earns less or, you know, who stays at home or whatever, but most women don't really want that, all right? And that's just the reality. Okay, so you have to accept that. You have to understand that. Um, the next thing is the ability to handle anything. Okay, so whatever happens, okay, you are the man in the relationship. You are the one ultimately where the buck stops. All right. So if somebody breaks into the house, you're the one who's going to have to deal with it. If the boiler breaks, you're the one who's going to have to deal with it. If the, the electricity goes off, if um, the roof falls off, right, you are the one who's going to have to deal with it. You have to be prepared to, to, to step up to the plate and get things sorted out, okay? Um, it, you know, again, you, you, you can't be sitting there helpless looking at her, asking her to do it. That's, that's not to say that she can't help you out with things, but she needs to ultimately feel like she can rely on you if the shit hits the fan. Now, now, hopefully, it won't, it won't happen that often. I mean, hopefully, you know, most of the time, things will be kind of running along okay, and it's all good. But in the end, when something happens that's challenging, she has to be able to rely on you, and she has to know that she can rely on you, okay, whatever it is, all right? The next thing, and this point leads on, is lack of vulnerability, okay? You don't want to be showing too much vulnerability to her. Now, I think that, this gets overstated a bit in the manosphere. I think you can dis display some vulnerability. I think you can show some humanity. You can talk about, you know, traumatic events maybe that happened, things that made you sad in the past, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. But fundamentally, you know, you've got to show yourself to be strong. And even if you're not necessarily feeling that strong on the inside, that's the impression that you've got to give because you need to give her that confidence. That's what she needs to feel from you, okay? That is the masculine energy that she wants to receive, all right, in her feminine, okay? So if you, there are problems in your life and there are things that, you know, are not going well and you feel bad about, you're going to have to have, and this is why I always talk about having a brotherhood of, of good male friends. You're going to have to talk to those guys about that shit. Okay. Vent to them. Don't vent to her. Okay. Because venting to her is going to be a turn off. It's going to make her feel less confident in you than she was before it may end up making her disrespect you and, and look women on automatons i'm not saying this is just an automatic thing as soon as you say oh i'm really sad because my you know somebody passed away in my family and she's like oh fuck that guy he's a he's a loser i mean it's not quite like that but at the same time there needs to be a balance all right so reduce the amount of vulnerability that you display to her all right you need to be the rock you need to be the strong one. what's next um Fundamentally, well, there's a couple of things I put here. Um, the first thing is, I'm going to I'm going to do it this way around. The first thing is that, um, contrary to to sort of popular belief and maybe to, even to some of the things that we've already said, you also need to be empathetic. Okay, she, you you can't be this two D alpha kind of guy, twenty four seven, who do, who just has no emotion, who doesn't give a damn about her struggles or the, the shit that she's going through or the, 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 the issues that she has, okay? You, you have to be there and seek to understand her and seek to help her um, in, in whatever way that you can, okay? Now, that's, that doesn't mean sitting there for three hours every night and listening to her sob stories about what happened at work all day and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, you, you, you want to be... <sighs> There's got to be that side of it as well, okay? And I think guys will often come into a space like this and they think, right, I've just got to be this hard-ass 2D alpha. I've got to be this kind of like cartoon He-Man character who's got no feelings, no, no vulnerability, just getting, it, getting shit done. It's this Jocko Willink kind of version of masculinity. 
where there's no empathy at all. You need to have some empathy. She needs to feel cared for. She needs to feel loved, okay? So ensure that that is present because if, if that's not present, then in the end, that's going to be to your detriment as well, okay? And then finally, and this I suppose is the most important point of all, is you've got to seek to remain her best option, okay? Because ultimately, what is hypergamy? Hypergamy is she wants to get the best option she can in the dating marketplace. Somehow, you have to seek to remain her best option, okay? How do you do that? It's not easy. The only answer that really makes any sense is constant self-improvement and constant self-reinvention, okay? What you can't afford to do is just sit on the couch and be the same dude that you were six years ago when you met. You need to evolve, okay? Things are going to change. Things in your life are going to change. Things in the relationship are going to change. The challenges that you face are going to change. The, the geopolitical landscape is going to change, okay? You need to be constantly working on yourself and constantly making yourself better than the people around you. Now, the good news is that, look, it, it's not like you have to be this super, super, you know, like top 0.0001% man. It, all you have to be really is a bit better than the people around for the most part, okay? Because it's a fiction to say that women's love is so fickle that she's just going to drop you immediately just for some other dude just because he's got a better car. I mean, and, and if she does, then she's not the kind of woman that you want to be with anyway, right? But, you know, for the most part, that's not, that's not going to happen. But you do need to be leveling up. You do need to be working on yourself and you do need to be maintaining and in, indeed improving your position, not just financially, in all aspects, okay? You need to be becoming a better man all the time. As Mark Manson said, the only true dating advice really is self-improvement okay so that's what you have to do you have to remain her best option to the best of your ability those are the things you've got to do even then you know it's tricky we live in a trick a tricky world as far as this kind of stuff is concerned but it is possible and again in closing finding the right woman choosing the right woman is super super key because if you start off with somebody who's not forgiving of you know or sort of is it, it, it seems intolerant of, of, of certain things and is not going to be understanding and is not going to give you a little bit of leeway from her side then you're off to a very very bad start you want to find somebody who you are yes attracted to yes you get on really well with yes there is chemistry there's that bond there there's that sexual connection there whatever but equally your sense is that this is somebody who if when times get tough she's going to be there and she's going to help you through that but in the end as i say you have to be the captain of the ship all right so you want some sort of feeling of, that she's gonna not just 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 bail at the first sign of any trouble but ultimately you also have to accept the fact that you have to man up and you have to be the guy who's gonna get things done get things sorted solve the problems etc 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 anyway i hope this video helped please do give me a like on the way out please do subscribe to the channel we've got plenty more where this came from coming up very soon hit the notifications bell and write a comment below let me know what you think about this topic and also any other topics that you would like me to cover in forthcoming videos and the other thing is if you want to talk to me about your own dating situation if you'd like some help some advice you can just email me troy at real troyfrancis.com and we can organize a quick call and we can we can get into it that way anyway thank you very much speak soon Bye bye